rising up from coast to coast, from north to south and east to west. The cry of hearts that love your name, which with one voice we will proclaim.
Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Skipton Baptist Church on this Resurrection Sunday. My name's Lisa Holmes, and I'm one of the ministers here, and I'm here with my colleague, Chloe Heskin, and we want to wish you a happy Easter. Yeah, happy Easter. So we had an online service last Easter, and we were really, really hopeful and expectant that we'd all be back to normal again by this time. But of course, that isn't the reality. But here we are, doing the best that we can, continuing to worship as a scattered church together. Yeah, so whether you are joining with us now on YouTube, catching up later, um, we hope that you will have a real encounter with the living Jesus today. Hopefully you got the message earlier on in the week um, about things you might need for this service. Um, Hopefully you've got some eggshells, that's like chicken eggshells rather than chocolate eggshells, with you this morning. Perhaps a bit of soil out of your garden and uh, a sunflower seed or something similar. Yeah, so we don't know whether you uh, joined us this morning for our dawn Zoom service, whether you were actually out somewhere, whether you were at home tucked up in bed but catching up, Um, but we hope you um, enjoyed that if you did. Uh, Lisa, did you... Did you make it anywhere? Well, of course. Of course, it's the dawn service, isn't it? It's the only time the whole year we get out that time. But um, last year I was up on Black Park, and um, so that's always the place to be for Easter Sunday. How about you? Uh, For me, I was on Skipton Moor, just behind my house, so nice and convenient. Almost like staying in bed, but not quite. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) sneezing. Well, it would take a miracle to get most of us out of bed, wouldn't it, at that time of the morning? In fact, it did take a miracle, the miracle of Jesus, the crucified one, the one who was dead and buried and in the tomb, and yet who rose to life on the third day. So whether you're still rubbing your eyes this morning or whether you're feeling fresh as a daisy, we're going to turn and celebrate and worship our risen Lord Jesus Christ. So let's sing together and worship him. We're going to worship together again, and we're going to affirm that amazing story, the story of that Easter uh, so long ago, which resonates through history. We're going to remember the events of the Good Friday where our sin was paid for, and we're going to remember that awesome event of Easter Sunday, what we're celebrating and remembering this morning, that the grave burst open, death had no hold on our Lord, and... uh, Let's not lose the wonder of that. Let it be our fuel as we sing out, oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my savior from that cursed tree his body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone messiah still and all alone oh praise the name of the lord our god Oh, praise His name forevermore, for endless days we will sing Your praise, O Lord, O Lord our God. On the third, at break of dawn, the Son of Heaven rose again or trampled death where is your sting the angels roar for Christ the King oh praise the name of the Lord our God oh praise his name forever Days. We will 
Turn in robes of white. The blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints, my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Oh, praise his name forevermore, for endless days we will sing your praise, oh Lord, oh Lord our God. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Conquering sun and the 
Jesus is the victory Thou or death has won The soldiers took Jesus to Golgotha, which means place of the skull. There, they gave him some wine mixed with a drug to ease the pain, but he refused to drink it. They nailed Jesus to a cross and gambled to see who would get his clothes. It was about nine o'clock in the morning when they nailed him to the cross. On it was a sign that told why he was nailed there. It read, This is the King of the Jews. The soldiers also nailed two criminals on crosses, one to the right of Jesus and the other to his left. People who passed by said terrible things about Jesus. They shook their heads and shouted, Ha! So you're the one who claimed you could tear down the temple and build it again in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. The chief priests and the teachers of the law also made fun of Jesus. They said to each other, He saved others, but he can't save himself. If he is the Messiah, the King of Israel, let him come down from the cross, then we will see and believe. The two criminals also said cruel things to Jesus. About noon, the sky turned dark and stayed that way until around three o'clock. Then, about that time, Jesus shouted, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God. Why have you deserted me? Some of the people standing there heard Jesus and said, Is he calling for Elijah? One of them ran and grabbed a sponge. After he had soaked it in wine, he put it on a stick and held it up to Jesus. He said, Let's wait and see if Elijah will come and take him down. Jesus shouted and then died. At once the curtain in the temple tore in two from top to bottom. A Roman army officer was standing in front of Jesus. When the officer saw how Jesus died, he said, This man really was the Son of God. After the Sabbath, Mary Magdalene, Salome, and Mary, the mother of James, bought some spices to put on Jesus' body. Very early on Sunday morning, just as the sun was coming up, they went to the tomb. On the way, they were asking each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance for us? But when they looked, they saw that the stone had already been rolled away, and it was a huge stone. The women went into the tomb, and on the right side, they saw a young man in a white robe sitting there. They were alarmed. The man said, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus from Nazareth, who was nailed to a cross. God has raised him to life and he isn't here. You can see the place where they put his body. Now go and tell his disciples, especially Peter, that he will go ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you. So hope has been such a big word this year, well-used word, perhaps because we felt like we really needed something to keep a hold of. And hope has been used, I think, nearly as often as the word unprecedented. <laughs> so over this last week, we have been reflecting on the events of Holy Week leading up to Easter Sunday. And in particular, we've been looking at the Palm Sunday and how the people in Jerusalem were feeling hopeful. They were hopeful because Jesus uh, was there, who they thought was their saviour king, coming to save them from the Romans. Yeah, it all started out so well, didn't it? But then as the week progressed, well, it didn't seem so good anymore. Jesus clashed with the authorities. He even got into trouble overturning the money um, changers' tables in the temple. And things started to turn really nasty. Yes, and then it carried on. Even on the Thursday evening, things were even more uh, looking like they were hopeless. Even the things Jesus was saying, like, one of the disciples is going to betray me. One of you is going to deny me three times, and you're all going to run away. It was starting to feel really sad and depressing. And then, to top it all off, 
Jesus was arrested. They were all feeling hopeless. And then, of course, that came Friday, and Jesus was beaten. He was tried. The crowd were condemning him. And eventually he was sentenced and crucified on a Roman cross. And all hope was crushed. He was gone. And all his followers fled, apart from the few women who were left to sort out the funeral arrangements, along with a couple of the Sanhedrin, Joseph and Nicodemus. And then it came to Saturday, a dark day. All hope was now gone. But it wasn't the end, because there was still hope. Hope is not wishful thinking. It's not just somehow trusting that it will be okay or it'll work out somehow or we'll get through Hope, real hope, is embodied in a person, a real living person. Hope has a name, and his name is Jesus. And there he was on Easter morning, hope himself standing in front of them, out of the open tomb, stone rolled away. Jesus had entered death into darkness and defeated it and burst out with light and life. Yeah. And in fact, one of Jesus' closest friends, Peter, the one who'd denied him, wrote this many years later. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. I love that phrase, living hope. It's not just hope, but living hope. And that's who we worship, isn't it? Jesus, our living hope. How great the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain i could not climb in desperation i turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows Christ, my living Lord. And who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to where my sin. Cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Hallelujah. broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living lord and hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in Christ, my living Lord. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave. No claim on 
Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh God, you are my living hope. So I don't know about you, Chloe, but I have noticed that people have got a lot more green fingered during lockdown and spent much time in their garden. I mean, even I have done some gardening, and you know how much I love gardening. Uh, I agree. Um, we have definitely, too, in our house, uh, got involved in a lot more gardening. It looks completely different, our garden, now than what it did a year ago. Um, so we thought we'd make use of your newly learnt skills and have a go at doing some Easter gardening. So if it's now is the time to go and find those eggshells, um, I would rather say um, normal eggshells rather than chocolate eggshells at this <laughs> point, and uh, some soil and some flower seeds. If you haven't got them, uh, that's okay. Maybe you could do it later on in the week. Because we're going to make an Easter garden, aren't we? Mm. And actually, the idea of an Easter garden has been around for a long time. I mean, I remember making Easter gardens with uh, a bit of moss and some pebbles and all sorts of bits I could find in the garden with my granny and grandpa, and clearly that was a long time ago now. But Easter gardens help us to remember what happened in the Easter story. But I've never made an Easter garden using an eggshell and a sunflower seed. Yeah, it might sound a bit random, but bear with us. We do have a reason for doing it. Okay, so the first thing you need is you need your eggshells. Okay, here now, the reason why we've chosen eggshells um, is because, well, you eat lots of eggs at Easter. So um, you want to get it, you want to make sure it's reasonably intact here, not uh, too broken. And at this point, the egg represents the tomb. So how does it stand up, Chloe? Uh, oh, yeah, good point. You either want to crease the bottom or stick it in a uh, egg, cup. Egg, cup. egg cup. Egg cup. Excellent. So after you've got your eggshell and you've got that all organized, then what you need to do is to fill up your eggshell with a bit of soil or compost um, about halfway up. And in good blue Peter fashion, here's one that uh, I made earlier. Um, you can see it's pretty much filled up there. Um, and so you want to do that, and the, the soil here represents the darkness of the tomb once the stone had sealed it up. And that darkness was felt on that Easter Saturday when everything seemed completely hopeless. Okay, and so once you've got your soil, you need your sunflower seeds. Now, can anyone work out what the sunflower seeds might represent or mean? Oh, I think that's quite difficult. Yeah? Yeah. Um, okay, uh, maybe thinking about a uh, typical Sunday school answer. Oh, well, just a guess, but Jesus? Yeah, yeah, well done. Okay, so what you need to do with your sunflower seeds is make a bit of a hole inside your soil that you've got here and plop in your sunflower seed. And that is representing Jesus being laid to rest in the tomb, in the darkness of the tomb. Brilliant. And then because it's actually a sunflower seed, you might want to give it a little bit of water and ideally put it in a warm and sunny place and hopefully something might start to happen and it might actually start to grow. Yeah, because Jesus didn't stay dead in the tomb forever. After three days, he, Jesus the Son, rose again. Just like a sunflower rises up out of the ground towards the light, Jesus rose out of the tomb, bringing new life and light. And so, when your sunflower begins to grow, hopefully it will grow, like this one starting to out here, um, you can remind yourself that when Jesus rose out of the tomb, um, he defeated death, conquered evil, and brought new life and new hope. Wow. And how long have you been growing that one for, Chloe? This is a week old. A week old. It's amazing, old. isn't it? Yeah. What a great sign of hope. So whether you've been able to do that with us this morning or whether you're going to give it a go later on in the week, we hope that it will be a simple reminder of the hope that we have in Jesus. Indeed. And one last thing, we couldn't have you all growing sunflower seeds at home and not have a sunflower growing competition. So we would love for you all to have a go growing them at home. Send us in the photos and perhaps later on in the summer we can see who has the tallest sunflower. That'll be really exciting to see, won't it? Mm -hmm. I think we're going to sing again together um, along with a children's video. So hopefully we'll be doing that. Yeah.
together in a responsive prayer and at the end of each little verse if we can say together hallelujah and it would be fantastic if we can hear you from all across Skipton and further afield this morning so let's pray together from the darkness of the grave blood poured out a crown of thorns Christ the Lord is risen today hallelujah, hallelujah. from the triumph that is won over the power and fear of death, Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. Walking from the empty tomb, opening wide the gates of life, Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. Lord of life, you defeated death to show that we can rise from all that binds us to the world, pride, envy, anger, fear, the debt of sin that holds us here, Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. Lord of life, you defeated death to demonstrate a love that is beyond our understanding, that reaches out even to me, saving grace to all who hear. Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. Lord of life, we pray for all who bring your word of life as a light to those in darkness. For those who bring your word of peace, to those enslaved by fear, for those who bring your word of love, to those in need of comfort. Lord of love and Lord of peace, Lord of resurrection life, be known through our lives and through your power. Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Greatest day in history, death is beaten, you have rescued me, sing it out, Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave, life eternal, you have won the day, sing it out, Jesus is alive, he's alive. Happy day, happy day, you wash my sin away, oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same, forever I am changed. When I stand in that place, Free at last, meeting face to face. I am yours, Jesus, you are mine. And 
is joy, perfect peace. Earthly pain finally will cease. Celebrate, Jesus is alive. He's alive. And oh, happy day, happy day. You washed my sin away. Oh, happy day, happy day. I'll never be the same. day, what a glorious way, you have saved me, and oh, what a glorious day, what a glorious name. Jesus, Jesus, and oh, happy day, happy day, you washed my sin away, oh, Happy day, happy day, I'll never be the, oh, happy day, happy day, you wash my sin away, oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same. So it's been really brilliant to join with you in worship today. We hope that you've been able to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. And we hope as well that they'll be able to plant their sunflower seeds. Are you looking forward to that, Chloe? Yes, I'm looking forward to seeing them all growing and see who can grow the biggest. And to give us hope through however long this next few weeks and months ahead is, well, we're in this strange situation. So watch your sunflower seed grow and it will remind you that Jesus is our hope We want to finish this morning with an Easter blessing for you all. May Jesus, the light of the world, bring light to your life. May Jesus' way be the way you follow and lead others. May Jesus' death bring you freedom and hope. And may Jesus' resurrection fill you with life to its fullness. And may the grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship and power of the Holy Spirit Be with you this resurrection day and every day that is to come. Amen.